Hey, what's up, YouTube? Hello. This is Arjun Govinda here to bring you another video. Today we are going to be learning how to make a zombie game. Now, if you look right here, you already have our zombie game. I'm just going to show you how to make one with a round timer, of course. And about that other video, but the round timer, that was a horrible video. Not the best way to do a round timer. But, oh well, I'll show you what a real round timer should look like. First of all, let's open our script. I have all this stuff that I wrote. Yeah. You can um, make your own, I guess. Or you can try to copy mine. Make your own, though. I want you to make your own. Right here we have MSG, which is short for message. If you go over to the message value, I mean variable, string value, oh, of course. That is our guy operating message thing. You see this guy right here? That dude is going to display what's on the M. <coughs> the MSG message. I hope you got that. And damage. What is damage? This is a zombie game, people. We don't want zombies to give out damage that's the same. We want damage to increase. Because this zombie game, we're going to be adding rounds. It sounds complicated, but I basically have the layout right here. Here we have round. See? Round. Round current round is equal to zero because once the server starts, it checks if there's one player. If there's no players, then the server is going to start without a player. So we don't want that. That's why. Okay, okay. Before we get to that, let's look over these other variables. We have speed. Yes, we're going to be toggling the zombie speed. At round one, their speed is going to be super slow, but. As the round increases, their speed becomes greater. So does their health and their worth. These are all variables in workspace, because we want them to be global variables. I don't know how to make those inside of a script, so I'm just going to insert them into workspace. It saves me a lot of thinking. Now, where are our zombies at? We'll get to that soon. Now here we have a function for checking the amount of players in the, the game. Why? Because we don't want the server to start when there's only zero players in the game. And when someone enters, they're thinking, what? Round two? I didn't even get to round one. Yeah, so it's going to keep checking and checking and checking and checking. Let's see right here has an if statement uh, for basically saying if... Um, the players amount of players in the game is more than zero, which is one to like infinity, but max is is like how much ever you said it. So. And initiate the game. And we don't put an else statement here because if it doesn't pass this statement, it just moves on and goes to get players. That's why I didn't put an else statement. It saves me time. And I put a wait here just in case. I don't crash the game. Moving on. Initiate the game. This is the big chunk, I guess you could call it. Uh, you can ignore this. This is just fancy writing. It basically is like a typewriter effect. I'll tell you guys about strings next video, maybe. I don't know. After it says that message, uh, it goes directly to spawn zombies. It ex it's exactly what the name means. This is exactly what I mean. It's going to spawn zombies now. And uh, for that to work, well, this is a function. We're calling a function. And if you go down, here's our function. Whoa, how does it call a function if the function is down here? Because we, we put, a, we put a, a line here that says we're going to call it. That doesn't end this function right here, but it just initiates this function while continuing this function. I hope you get that. So it basically goes to server storage. Oh, our 
more zombies are in server storage. What what's PAX? PAX is what we're gonna be looking through. See, server storage that PAX get children, we're getting all the children of this parent. Now we're gonna do map dot random because um the zombie whoops. Yeah, those are our zombies. Right here, I only have five. Packs. Why did I create packs? Because I don't want the same looking boring zombies in the game. We're gonna have big zombies, small zombies, fast zombies, slow zombies, ugly zombies, handsome zombies, I don't know. All sorts of zombies. That's why I made that like that. That's why I put a map dot random statement or whatever you want to call it. And it just searches through one to the length of zombies. And then it clones that, it makes a new variable, clones it, and then it goes into workspace. Here's where the, these variables of damage, speed, health, and word come in handy. Damage is... Uh, we're adding to the damage, which is currently zero, the value of round. What is round? Round is round one. Round one, yes. Round here. Wait, what happened? How how do you increase round? How I, I never explained that. Okay, I'm uh, I'll explain it right now. See right here when an initiate game starts, the first thing we do is add a new round to round. So now as soon as it starts, the new round will be one. And then after it goes all the way back around round two, then all the way back around round three, and damage is getting increased as rounds go up. That's why yeah. Damage increases while the round goes up. So, and try not to increase your damages by plus ten or plus twenty. You'd be surprised how much help a character can lose. As for speed, I start them off at slow. I put plus two because speed is different from damage. I uh, I don't know how to explain that, but at like round five. Um, this is going to keep increasing, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, uh, 2, 5, 5, 10. They'll be at speed 10, which is pretty fast. Well, not that fast, but imagine round 15. They'll be almost around, oh, around 12. 2 times 12 is 24. Whoa. Round 5, okay, like round 10, 2 times 10 20. They'll be faster than you. Yeah. That's why I made it like this. As for health... The health is uh, the value of round times four because health is different. We can drain health very fast, so we want to give them lots and lots of health as the round goes up. As for worth, we'll ignore that because I haven't really created a use for that yet. I might, um, I might, you die, I might, um, whatever. I'll just ignore this. We'll get to that later. It's a, it's a huge game. Zombies isn't easy to make. It's a lot of stuff involved. Oh, yeah. What's that brick? What's that brick all about? Oh, that's that brick all about. Oh, I was making coins. Okay. Let's ignore that. What's that black guy all about? That big black bar. What the heck is that? Oh, I'm glad you asked. This is our EXP guy. Before we get to that, um... You should create a guy with this piece of code. Wow, four lines of code. This is basically telling each player what the game is telling them. This relates to message. So it takes the value of message, does while true to, which is pretty easy. I don't use a connect connection because it's faulty. I would rather use while true to because you want to get the value of that message every single nanosecond. So the player is always informed of what, what the heck is happening. And this is our guy. So what you want to have are these variables. You can change them if you're very good at making zombie games. Uh, you can edit these. Make your zombies more powerful. This is our basic layout. Current. What the heck is that? You can ignore that. I was going to use that for something, but... No, not anymore. And uh, that's about it. Um, oh, as for our timer, right. If you don't understand how this timer works, it basically creates a variable, a local variable, only to this function. And we're going to make that equal to the amount of time we want to give the every single player. 
amount of time and this is uh, and now it does for it uses a for statement for i equals one two sex two it's basically saying from one to the amount of seconds and i is equal to one and i will keep on increasing i guess just know uh understand this part and in this statement it subtracts one from seconds that's basically it. You subtract one, then wait one, and then your time decreases and decreases and decreases and decreases. Until it reaches the... Oh, until it reaches the amount of time here. It's, it's complicated. For i equals 1 to 1000, you're subtracting 1, which is equal to 0. How are you going forward but going backwards? Here's how it works. So as i, as i goes up to 2, then 3, then 4... And five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and ten, and eleven, until all the ways it reaches a, ten, a thousand. For every time it goes through a number, it goes up a number and it subtracts one. Hope you got that. You can ignore this. This is for me. I mean, if you want to copy it, I'm not going to explain it though. After it, oh, and it also prints as a message. So every time it goes up by one, it also prints this message of some seconds subtracting. And then after, after it reaches a thousand. It ends, and then we could just put clones destroy, because the round is over. What are clones? Clones are our new zombies. A clone is equal to new zombies clone, or clone them. After it does all of that, it goes back to get players. So we're going to start the game all over again. Boom, 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 boom. Now, then, then it goes to round equals round plus one, which is now round two. And yeah, it keeps on going and going and going. Some of the zombies get so strong, they kill everybody. I haven't made a reset for that yet, but this is all I have so far. I hope you enjoyed this. It's uh, it's not the best zombie script out there, but it'll help you understand what we are talking about. Goodbye.